Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to take a look at the study that was just published July the 22nd by the NIST. And it's about quantum computing defeating encryption right after this. I think you probably remember I did a, some basic things on quantum computing back last year. And so I kind of want to revisit that because the NIST has published their, uh, the study is called the results of the second round, but they're starting their third round now in selection of the best counter quantum decryption threat. Uh, so uh, it the, the paper is a bit technical, but I'll include it in the uh, description of this video so that you can read it. But uh, wh what's going on here? Why would they do this? So <clears throat> some background. I mean, there's been concerns about uh, quantum computing having the capability of being able to defeat most of our modern encryption methods uh, today. Um, but I think... Uh, there was some articles that kind of peaked last October when Google announced they had achieved quantum supremacy, which basically means that the, for the first time they've been able to actually reduce the computing time it would take uh, our classical supercomputers to do a very complex math problem. And <clears throat> what they had estimated was it would take about 10,000 years for the supercomputers uh, to be able to process uh, a, an answer through this complex math problem, which they were able to do on their quantum computer in less than three minutes. So, yes, yeah, like I said, security experts have been kind of concerned about the processing speed would quickly render our current cryptographic algorithms obsolete. So uh, a current computer, a supercomputer, can brute force uh, our stronger encryption methods just short of the end of the universe. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a long time it would take to be able to do it. So at least from the standpoint of classical computing, you're safe. But <clears throat> quantum computers don't work the way classical ones do uh, in that they, they, see a, they don't do classical step-by-step -step, you know, uh, math, mathematics in order to reach a conclusion. Uh, because they see a, ra a wider range of numbers all at once. So the scope was the National Institute and, and, uh, of Standards and Technology, or NIST, has spent the last three years examining new approaches to encryption and data protection. So uh, <clears throat> what they're concerned about is they want a means to defeat an assault from a quantum computer. Uh, in order to decrypt uh, encrypted uh, uh, our encryption standards uh, and render our data exposed. The study began in 2017, I believe, and there were 69 submissions from different organizations as potential you know, solutions to this problem. So, I mean, they've gone through that second round and they published a report where they have chosen 15 finalists Eight of those finalists they consider ready for submission. That, that is, the quality and speed and accuracy of the, of the algorithms they believe are ready to go to the finalist stage to really be examined and poured over by the security experts to really see if they do what they're intended to do. And there are seven alternative uh, submissions which have some problems. Maybe it's in performance. Uh, maybe it's in there, they don't, aren't suited to the use cases that the NIST is trying to test, but aren't as well suited. But they're still candidates because they could be improved by the time the study is over. Uh, as of this writing, I know of no current encryption methods that have been compromised. Now, there are some obsolete ones that have been compromised. Uh, like SHA-1 and uh, RSA-128, I believe. Uh, those have definitely been uh, defeated by even current methods to, uh, uh, to uh, beat them. But I don't know of any current com quantum computing algorithms that are able to defeat any of the modern ones yet. Uh, so as of the time I did this video, and that's not to say that, the, I mean, quantum computing is still advancing. So if you're watching this a year from now, my words could be totally false. Um, but the NIST set out to study encryption and decryption algorithms that could, found, that could be found to remain secure. 
<clears throat> and there's some that have been developed as far back as the 70s that were based on what's called lattices. Uh, and I, I'm just using that as an example where no matter how much math you knew, if you didn't know the path through the lattice, you wouldn't be able to decrypt the message. And I know that several of those candidates that they're looking at uh, use la la modern versions of the lattice. Uh, to do it. So I'm not going to say it's exactly like the ones that were developed in the 70s. They aren't, but uh, but they are more modern. So <clears throat> how big was the, the Google quantum computer? It was 54 qubits. So we think, uh, at least the NIST thinks, that you would have to have several thousand qubit uh, quantum computers, uh, quantum computing uh, machines in order to defeat the modern encryption ones. But, they, you know, they're not sure. I mean, we haven't done this yet. There aren't any quite that big. Yeah, I know somebody's going to tell me that that uh, that they, yes, they exist. But you know, the, uh, what we're talking about is a monolithic uh, qubit machine, not one that's pasted together with a bunch of others. Um, but can a more sophisticated algorithm to be, be used to foil the computing power of a quantum machine? That's really the question here. Uh, can we find a a algorithm that has the ability uh, to no matter how fast the quantum machine is, to be able to remain secure for a very long time. I mean, we want we want it to take millions of years in order to solve, at least, if not billions, as in the current methods that we have. So that's what the NIST set out to do. That's a pretty uh, that's a pretty tough project. So they released their, uh, this is a, a typical government title, status report on second round of the NIST post-quantum cryptography standardization process, NIST IR 8309, and that was published July the 22nd. I'll put a link to it below so you can find it. Um, the finalists that were chosen were based on what the NIST considers to be the most promising fit for the majority of use cases, and they defined a couple of them. First is... Uh, the al algorithm or the outcome has to, has to they're, they think, will select one or two algorithms for encryption and key establishment. And then they believe that there'll be one or two others that will that are good and suitable for producing digital signatures. And those are quite different, uh, as you probably know, in, in today's world on how we do those. Uh, so they think that by the time this is over, the total time of the study will be around five, maybe six years. So it could be as early as 2022. It could be 2023 when it completes. I guess it's going to complete when they feel like it, they're ready to have it complete. And that, I would prefer that myself. But that should be well in advance of any practical quantum computer that would threaten any current encryption standards. At least that's the thought right now. Um, and that uh, that assumption is based on if the current progress in quantum computing uh, quantum computing holds true, that is the amount of progress that they're doing uh, it won't won't suddenly have a huge leap uh, in order to get there. So this is my opinion only. Uh, I think that uh, this is kind of the, the I mean the NIST has been kind of uh, damaged from some of the yeah there's been some problems with with some of their. Uh, previous studies, um, but I think this is the kind of work that NIST really needs to do, and I'm really glad to see it happen. I mean, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm quite interested in this. I have been for quite some time interested in quantum computing, but uh, and I'll and and um, yeah, well, it'd be interesting to watch and see what happens with this. So, a very short one today. I. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot more to say about this topic at the moment. Uh, you're, I mean, I'll, you can read it for yourself and see how uh, the algorithms were chosen and which ones and why. <laughs> I think the selection criteria was very good. I think it's, uh, it, it exemplifies kind of the best kind of work that NIST does. So, yeah, so I'm glad to see this happen. I mean, I know that they have a damaged reputation, and you probably know that too, but... It'll take a long time for that to get repaired, so hopefully this is a step in that right direction. Hope to see you all again real soon. Please like and subscribe, and bye for now.